I've been looking at these plans for an hour, and I can't figure out how they relate to my car. Let me see them. If you can figure them out, maybe you will beat me in next year's Soapbox Derby. Hmm. I'm just as lost as you. Hey, maybe Alex is home. He already built and raced one of these Soapbox Derby cars. If anyone can help us, it's Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey, well, if it isn't the sibling speed team. <laughs> I've been looking at these plans, and I can't seem to figure them out. My sister's just as stumped. Since you built one of these already, we thought you could help. Now, well, let me take a look here. Uh, well, the drawing just represents the full-size parts of your car. I know that, but I just can't make the connection. Uh, well, it's all a matter of ratios and proportions. What do you mean? Maybe you'll understand better if I uh, show you a model, and then I'll explain it to you. Okay, I just want to get back to work on my car as soon as possible. This is the model of a soapbox derby racer, just like the one I built. Now that I've set it on top of the actual racer, take a close look. Okay, what am I supposed to see? Well, every detail of the actual racer is identical to the model, only larger. Let's say it's 15 times larger than the model, so every real part of the racer is 15 times larger. I still have the plans for my car. Let's measure a specific part and compare it to the drawing. Okay. The axle is 36 inches in length. Uh, now measure the axle in the drawing. It's three inches. All right. Let's do a little math here to figure out the ratio. Put the three on the top and the 36 on the bottom. Then go for the lowest possible denominator. What do you get? Well, three goes into three once, and three goes into 36 12 times. So that would mean that for every inch on the plan, it would equal 12 inches on the axle. Right. So the scale of that drawing is 1 inch equals 12 inches, or a ratio of 1 to 12. Now, let's look at your plans again. It doesn't say anything about the scale. No, but we've already figured that out, remember? Measure right here, which shows the length of the floorboard. OK, it's 6 and 1 half inches. Now, by applying our 1 to 12 ratio, we should be able to figure out the actual size of your racer part. So if I multiply 12 times 6 and 5 tenths, I'll get the actual length of my floorboard? 78 inches. Right, dude. Now that we know how ratios help you figure out the scale on your soapbox derby parts, let's uh, take that a step further and apply that knowledge in other ways. We all know that ratios can help you figure out proportions. Uh, where else does it come in handy? How about making something like Kool-Aid? Maybe. Uh, tell us how. Well, I like the kind where you mix your own sugar. The pack says to blend one cup of sugar and the powder of the pack to a half gallon of water. And what happens when you add, you know, too much or too little sugar? Well, when you use too much, it's too sweet. When you don't use enough, it comes out sour. Yeah, so, you know, even when you're making Kool-Aid, you have to know something about ratios. Hey, you know what's really important to know about ratios? Where? When you're building an airplane. The engineers who build them, they use ratios all the time in the wind tunnels to measure the four things that make an airplane fly. Weight, thrust, drag, and lift, and how those things relate to each other. So, you mean when we build our soapbox racers, we do some of the same things they do when they build airplanes? Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, let's look at the math here for a few minutes. Is this going to take long? No, bear with me. This actually may help you get your car built sooner. All right, what should we do? Let's we'll start off by making a simple ratio. Say, uh, the number of boys entered in the soapbox derby versus the number of girls. Let's say for every six boys entered into the derby, there are five girls. How would we write that? The ratio of boys to girls would be six to five. So it can be written as a fraction, six over five. That's right, six over five. In this case, the higher number is displayed over the lower number. Now I'm going to make things a little more complicated for you. A proportion is when two ratios have equal value. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of like... I know. It's like saying one-fifth is equal to two-tenths. There you go. That can be written as one-fifth equals two-tenths. And red as one is to five as two is to ten. The one and the ten in the proportion are the extremes. The five and the two are the means. When you multiply the means together, they should be equal. Sometimes you don't know one of the terms, so you use a variable in place of one of the terms. You write it one-fifth equals x over 25. Then you solve for x by dividing by the number and before the variable. So in this problem, 25 
divided by 5 equals 5. Therefore, x equals 5. You got it, dude. So how does this all apply to building my car? Well, Austin, a proportion will help you enlarge or reduce the size of an object through a scale drawing or a blueprint. That's what the designers of your car have done for you in the drawings you brought over. You see, what they did was they took your full-size actual parts and drew them out in a reduced size, but in perfect scale with your actual parts. So all I need to do now is measure the parts on my drawing and compare them to the actual parts I'm using? Yep. And before we show you how real cars are designed, you need to do some more classroom activities to make sure you understand all about ratios and proportions. the plans exactly how they are because if not you might be breaking a rule and not even realize it and not pass inspections. So um, I, I think it's definitely made me more analytical and I've learned that as I get older that I, I seem to solve problems easy. I can follow directions really well from working with the plans. You know building and racing a soapbox derby car has given me a real appreciation for how cars are designed and built. Now that I'm in college I'm enrolled in classes that help me learn more about the engineering that goes into building cars and airplanes. Cool. So, what do you do in class? Let me show you one of my projects. What I'm doing is I'm building car frames and testing them for strength. I make them out of these dowels. Actually, it's the same thing that car manufacturers do before they put a new model out on the market. Why do they have to make a model? Well, it's a lot cheaper and simpler to make a model than to build something full size and then test it. Before they build a full-sized car, they take the model to the wind tunnel and test everything from the aerodynamics to the body design, you know, to figure out the drag and stuff. By doing that, they can get a good idea about the kind of gas mileage the full-sized car is likely to get. Your soapbox derby racer parts are made on a machine that follows a pattern to cut the floorboards. The patterns relate to proportional models of the parts. Sounds like figuring out ratios and proportions is pretty important. How else can we use this information? You know, every kind of scientist uses ratios as a starting point for research. For instance, uh, people who study animals usually capture and recapture animals to figure out the ratios in nature. That way they can figure out if certain animals or certain species are endangered. Can you think of other ways to use them? Well, in science class, we determined the ratio of our shadow to how tall we were. At that time of day, everything that had a shadow would have the same ratio of shadow length to height. We measured the shadow of a tree, and by applying the ratio, found out how tall it was. So ratios and proportions help us do everything from designing machines to mixing Kool-Aid? But you have to know what each number in the ratio means. You might end up with cars that won't drive, airplanes that won't fly, or sour Kool-Aid. <laughs> Bingo. Thanks for helping me understand my plan. But it's time for me to head home and get back to work on my car. See ya. Bye, Alex. Bye. Good luck.